Hey everyone, it's Vicki Weber with At Home Author, and today I'm going to be sharing with you the one thing that all successful authors have. But before I do, I want you to go into the comments right now and tell me what being a successful author means to you. Does it mean be having a bestseller tag? Does it mean making a full-time income? Or maybe it just means children reading your books time and time again. Whatever that means to you, I want you to define it and put it in the comments right now because that helps me get a better idea of where you want to go and how you truly define success. Because here's the thing, success can be defined a lot of ways, a lot of ways. And so knowing where you stand and what your goals are, are so key to achieving them and to reaching them and to working towards them, right? So go in the comments right now and tell me, when you think about being a successful author, what does that actually mean? Now, one more thing before I dive into this deeper. When it comes to success, a lot of people get a little nervous, a little bit, ew, they get the heebie-jeebies from the idea of book sales. I hear all the time, well, I don't need my book to sell. I just want it to make an impact. Or, you know, I, I, I'm not in it for the money. You know, I, I don't want the money. I don't even really care if my book sells at all. I just want to do this and I want to help young readers. And the reason I want to address that is because that is the perfect mindset to have when you are writing. It is the perfect mindset to have as an author when you're writing your book. However, it is not the best mindset for an author who wants to be successful and who wants to be published. The reason is very simple. If your book is not selling, it's not making an impact. It's not helping people. It's not inspiring. It's not making kids laugh. It's not doing any of the things that you intended because if it's not selling, it's not in front of anyone. It's not on anybody's bookshelf. It's not being read anywhere. It's not serving the way that you want. So I want you right now to stop thinking about book sales as an icky thing. It doesn't have to be, right? Making money as an author, writing children's books, money is not a bad thing. In fact, it can be the thing that helps you give back. If there's a charity you want to support or a, a group that's underrepresented that you want to represent, having money come in could either support your family and therefore allow you to donate your time and volunteer for some of those things that are important to you, or you could donate money to those causes that are important to you. Or even better yet, you can reinvest the money into producing more books that will create a bigger impact, right? Money doesn't have to be an icky thing. It could be the thing that gives you more freedom and more ability to make a difference in the world. It could be the difference in the world. So right now, before you go any further, as you're thinking about that success, I want you to drop any preconceived notions you have about book sales being bad because they're not. If your book is selling, that means people love it. That means people are inspired and connecting to it or, you know, they are finding an escape from their reality or they are seeing themselves in a book that they have not before. It means you are educating. It means you are connecting. You are providing value to children. And that is incredibly powerful, right? So I want you to close your eyes right now and imagine what that success, what that feeling would be like. What, what would change in your life? What would be different? What would it feel like? And I'd love to know in the comments, but you know, this could be rhetorical. What would that be like? And now I want you to ask yourself, what is stopping you from achieving that goal? 
Because it's so easy to say, yes, I'm going to be a successful author, but then not take the leap and not take the action and not do the things that you need to do. And that's not where I want you to end up, right? So I know that was a lot, but it's really important that as we talk about what every successful author has, that your mindset is in the right place, that your head is on straight. Now, all of those things I just talked about, I share in a bit more detail inside the Profitable Picture Books program. Um, And also, I do that with my individual coaching students. So in the description below, you can find more details about that as we go forward. So finally, Vicki, what is the one thing that all successful authors have? And I mean the bestsellers. The, you know, ones making money, the ones producing tons of books every year, the ones making impact, what do they have? The answer is patience. Patience. Because if you think about, let's let's think about a job interview, right? Let's say you want to enter a new field and you see a job opening for something you really want to do. You're like, oh my gosh, that is so exciting. That job sounds fantastic. It's amazing, right? And you have all these skills to back yourself up. You have past courses. Maybe you have a degree. Um, you've passed job experience. You already have a resume written, so you make some tweaks. You've got a cover letter. You make some tweaks there. And you put it together and you apply to the job. What are the chances that you're going to get that job? You have a fair shot, right? You have experience. You, you know, you had all the materials put together. Um, you know, you've got a decent shot at that job. Now, imagine that you don't have any prior experience. You have the drive to learn skills, but you don't actually have any yet, right? You So you don't have a degree. You don't have any um, past work experience yet, but you're excited to learn. Um, but you also don't have a resume. You don't have a cover letter. And you rush through everything in five minutes. You slap something together and you're like, all right, here we go. Send it off. Now, what are the chances that you're getting that job? They're going to look at your resume and be like, okay, they don't have any prior experience. They don't have the skills we need. This is not very well written. It's kind of all over the place. There's typos everywhere. The spacing is weird. What is this even talking about here? It's going to feel very sporadic. It's going to feel very rushed. It is not going to give a great first impression. And so they're going to look at this and be like, "Mm, this is a pass, right? When you are writing children's books, the worst thing you can do is rush. I see so many people say, I've written it. Now I just have to get it published and out there before Christmas. And so they rush through everything. So that, you know, the design is a little bit of a mess. There are plot holes. There are inconsistencies. It's not edited very well. They didn't have a game plan at all for marketing. And so they get it up there and they don't get the results that they want. It's not having an impact. It's not selling. People aren't buying. People aren't talking about it. Rushing a children's book is not a positive thing, right? Because if you're going to do something, it's worth doing it well. And my best students in my in my uh, group program, in my individual program, my best students are the ones that stop and they think and they consider and they listen. They write something and they get feedback, right? They write something and they, they sit on it for a day. They, they leave it alone for a day and they come back to it with fresh eyes. They ask for feedback. They get perspectives. They work hard at taking a book from a good idea to great execution because there is a huge difference between having a good idea and having a great book, right? Having an idea half the time isn't even the hard part. It's getting the words on the page to live up to your vision for it. That is tricky and it takes time. It takes practice. It takes effort and learning and growing as an author, as a writer. And that's something you can only do if you have the patience 
to get there over time. If you are, you know, pressuring yourself into meeting deadlines that are unrealistic, you are going to be disappointed in the result. And when writing is so close to your heart, is that really what you want? Is that really why you're doing this? I don't think so. <laughs> but it's more than that. It's not just about the writing. If you want to be traditionally published, traditional publishing moves slowly. It just does. It's the way it is. And so you want to make sure that your query to agents or your query to publishers is the best it can be. It's your first impression, just like that job application we talked about. I just had several authors come to me um, just a couple weeks ago and they said, oh, I'm querying agents and I'm getting no's and I don't know why. And I pulled up their query and I looked at it and I said, read this out loud to yourself. Just read it out loud. And they did and they went, oh, because, you know, their sentences were a little bit of a mess. Their organization was off. Their pitch was not captivating. And when it comes to selling your book, you're the author. You should be able, you should be the best salesperson for it, right? But crafting a pitch isn't something you just snap your fingers and suddenly you have a great pitch. It's something that you write and you rewrite and you get feedback on it and you rewrite and you rewrite until you go, yes. This is it, right? And it's that thing that captivates people's attention and makes them want to open the book and learn more and makes them want to read and want to know what is inside this book. And if you can do that, you can sell to any reader, you could sell to any agent, you could sell to any publisher, but that takes time and it takes patience and it takes persistence. Now, if you wanna pursue self-publishing, the same thing applies. A lot of people choose pub self-publishing because they think it is so much faster. And it can be. It absolutely can be. But to do it well, you need to consider all of the factors. Writing still takes time. And once you're done writing, you need to go through the professional editing process. So you need to get booked in with an editor and you're doing multiple rounds, which means you're going back and forth. You are revising and revising and revising until it's ready and then you book an illustrator and an illustrator might not be ready to start right away they might be booked several months out I had an illustrator that was booked out by three years three years okay so when you were doing this and, and that doesn't even I didn't even touch on the you know the printing timelines um, if you're doing print on demand, that'll be a little bit faster, but then you need to create your marketing plan and you need to implement it. You need to be building your list before your book is published, right? And all of those things take time. If you think about any business out there, how many of them just open up shop one day with, you know, zero customers, zero advertisements, zero lists, zero, you know, announcing anything anywhere, do they do that? No. When a new restaurant is, is opening down the street, there are signs for weeks. There are emails. There are people talking about it on Facebook. You know, they are spreading the word. They are doing things on social media. They are doing things to let you know the grand opening is, insert date here. When you see a movie, the best movies, the ones that do the best and make the most money and the most people see it are the ones that say, coming, insert date here right? And they have advertisements and they get people talking and they have trailers and they have all of the things leading people and leading up to that date. So it needs to be no different for you, right? You can't just put the book up there and expect it to sell. That is something I did <laughs> with my first three books and it just does not work like that. It, you know, it doesn't work for books. It doesn't work for other products. Um, and you don't want to have to depend on luck. There are some people who got lucky who just put something up and, and that's great. And, I, and I'm so happy for them, but that's not a repeatable process, right? And as a teacher, I want you to gain the skills to be able to do this time and time again and grow your career with every book that you publish. So in order to do that, you have to have patience. You have to want this. You have to be prepared to work hard. 
You have to make the time, even if it's five minutes a day, okay? Every step forward is a step closer to your goals, even if it's baby steps, right? So think about your schedule, your time commitment. Think about what you want. Think about why you haven't started yet and get going, (laughs) okay? Have patience. Give yourself grace. Be prepared for the work and keep moving forward because I promise you, if you can do that, it will be worth it.